Hello plant lovers, Matthew in Melbourne welcoming you to my channel. Thanks for finding me. If you're interested, I post every week about the cold, cool, intermediate orchids I'm growing here in Melbourne. I am a complete amateur, but if that's of any interest, do hit subscribe. And today's epic video is about this stunning orchid, which I will show you in greater depth in a minute, but isn't it just the most beautiful thing? And let's cut straight to the chase. It is an odontoglossum and it's called pulchellum. Odontoglossum pulchellum. It is a species orchid. It's high altitude and it is at home on the high montane forest mountains that snake down from southern Mexico down through Central America to Costa Rica. And that is the clue as to its ideal growing conditions. This baby then can grow up to 2,000 meters, so that is fairly chilly. So let's talk about its ideal conditions first. It comes from high elevation, so it needs cold temperatures. So this really is a cold, cool growing uh, orchid, which is not that easy to find, let me tell you. It's incredibly easy, it's very beautiful, the flowers are long lasting and fragrant, but we'll get to all that. Let's talk about its conditions. Shall we have a quick segue about the name first though, Odontoglossum. Now I love the etymology of names and sometimes Latin names can be quite fascinating, revealing a lot about the plant itself or who named it. And if you're remotely interested, I actually have another YouTube channel, yes, can you have too many, with a friend of mine called Stephen Ryan, who used to host the Australian gardening program, Gardening Australia. I'll link it up here, because we made an episode about Latin names of plants, and it's kind of interesting, if you're interested. Back to Odontoglossum. Odon in Greek means tooth, and glossa means tongue. And what that refers to is at the base of the lip, and I'll come in and show you, there is essentially what looks like a tooth. <laughs> so it's a tooth tongue, a tonguey tooth. Anyway, it's actually kind of appropriate. And the puccellum comes from the Latin puccellus, which means small and beautiful. So there we are, odontoglossum puccellum, small, beautiful, toothy, tongue-like flowers. <laughs> Okay, that is the naming. Now, as you know, I live in Melbourne. We have cold, wet winters that don't freeze. Now, this is a cool climate orchid. It's not gonna do very well in anywhere with extreme temperatures, and it does need those cool winter temperatures to stimulate the flowers. Now, it is late winter here at the moment, and as you can see, it's got three fabulous blooming spikes of flowers. So the spikes are triggered in late autumn. It takes most of the winter for the spike to mature and it opens. But for that to happen, you are going to need cooler temperatures. And this baby lives outside all year for me. Outside in my area specifically means it is covered over so it's not rained on. It gets filtered light. And this one prefers to be more on the shady side of bright indirect light. But the other thing is, because it does come from high, moist, humid rainforest, is that it's one of those orchids that you really do not want to dry out. You do need to make sure that you're just on top of the watering. So for me, that means a little often. And at the moment, it is obviously late winter, it's quite cold, so that is about every three to four days, I'm giving it a little water. But in summer, when the ambient temperature is hotter, obviously I water it more. So it really depends where you are and what the ambient temperatures are. But essentially, don't let it dry out. Speaking of which, it is in terracotta because I am a terracotta pot kind of guy. Yes, but the problem is with those in summer, they will evaporate faster. So you will need to keep your eye on the watering of that. But the great thing about terracotta is it's free draining. The water evaporates quite quickly. It creates a sort of humidified environment around the orchid. It also means that the orchids don't sit in sort of stodgy medium that's quite wet because orchid roots do not generally like to be in wet medium. And speaking of medium, this is an epiphyte as many orchids are. So for me, it is a pretty generic medium, which is medium sized bark with a little bit of charcoal, a little bit of perlite, a little bit of sphagnum moss chopped up, and my secret ingredients, which are a little sprinkling of shell grit, which is the chicken food, and mycorrhizal fungi, plus a couple of granules of a slow release fertilizer in the mix. And talking of fertilizing, 
I give it an annual feed. So whenever I repot it, there is a slow release fertilizer in the mix. And then every spring, just a little topical application of a literally a few grains of slow release fertilizer. And then during the year, every really whenever I remember and as this one's outside it's not that often but maybe every three or four waterings a diluted solution of a seaweed based um, general purpose fertilizer and I dilute that to one eighth of the recommended dose. So there we are those are the key things about this temperature it is a cool grower and it needs those cool temperatures moisture don't let it dry out and on the darker shade of the bright indirect light spectrum and you will have the most fabulous plant so let us now talk to the flowers and you can see they are white now this particular one in fact most species odontoglossums as you can see have been used in lots of hybridization because the flowers are fragrant and they're long lasting and they're beautiful so you can you can certainly see in this some of its hybrid offspring but these particular flowers are really beautiful and gorgeously fragrant and the fragrance I was trying to figure out what it was and it just struck me which is ironic given that it is late winter and these are also in bloom now it smells of daffodils or kind of more like jonquils perhaps but it's very much in that family. It's a subtle, beautiful fragrance, not overpowering, but as you pass through, you get a waft and you think, hmm, what's that? It's this. So the flowers are long lasting, but as you can see, this is their natural habit. So they're quite pendulous. And as you can also see, the flowers tend to point down. Now, I am a bit of a nature boy. I don't like staking things and wiring things up. Sometimes plant lovers, you have to compromise. Now, I will stake a bloom, obviously, if the stem is just not strong enough to support it. But in this case, although I kind of like that arching habit, because it's very elegant, you really can't see the flowers. So here I have prepared earlier a bamboo cane. And in fact, talking of Nature Boy, this is from my own bamboo. I am going to stake up these blooms because I do want to be able to see them and they are very beautiful. So what I would suggest you do is, as the flower spikes are maturing, is just gently stake them. And I'm just gonna clip that on there, voila. So it's slightly more erect and you can see the flowers which are really beautiful. Other than that, it is a really low maintenance plant. This has been outside for me, as I said. It's quite a vigorous plant. Um, so in terms of flowering, like many of the Oncidium type orchids, as you can see, the flower spike comes out from that junction between the outside leaf on the pseudobulb and the pseudobulb on the inside there. So where most of these types of orchids bloom from is where the spike will come from. And like many of these types of orchids, it's from the new growth. So what you've got to do is encourage new growth annually because that matured bulb at this time next year is the one that's gonna be producing the flowers. It's not gonna flower from these older bulbs, which you want to maintain because they're still full of nutrients and energy and they're still feeding the plant, but they're not going to flower. So what I need to do is to encourage this to grow basically and it's quite a vigorous grower so that's not going to be a problem and really there's no trick to that if you're giving an orchid the conditions that it basically loves so you're giving it the right type of light moisture fertilizer and potting medium then you're going to get new growth you shouldn't really have to worry about it but it is vital because otherwise you'll get no flowers well there we are plant lovers i'm going to finish staking up these blooms so we can all enjoy them more and the delicate fragrance, my goodness, it is so beautiful. So there we are, the species orchid, which means it is, as it is found growing in the wild, um, from those high mountainous areas of Central America. This is Odontoglossum puchellum, which has a Greek and a Latin name for your etymological pleasure. Wherever you are, I hope your orchids are growing magnificently and I look forward to seeing you next week with another episode of my journey into growing cold, cool, intermediate orchids here in Melbourne as a rank amateur. See you next week.